coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. We dragged it home, and half hour later, we got it running, and uh, been playing with it ever since. Do you think this ever appeared in a sales brochure? One would stand on the running board, the other one would drive, and then they'd go rabbit hunting that way. And have you ever tried to restore the Cadillac's long-lost little brother? That gets pretty aggravating and frustrating. Plus... The customer said, let's go that next step. Since you can't find it aftermarket, what do we do? We talk classical glass in Under the Hood, just for fun. Should we throw in a Rambler? Oh, yes. Okay, we will. Cruise in, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hi everybody, welcome to Cruise In, presented by RK Motor Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps, and what a combination we have today. Fresh fruit and classic cars. We're at the Antique Automobile Club of America, Northern Ohio region's annual show. It's at the Patterson Fruit Farm, so fresh fruit and classic cars. Bill, the license plate says 1937 Caddy. It's actually Cadillac's kind of little brother, isn't it? Right, a, it's a LaSalle. LaSalle. Nobody knows what a LaSalle is. Explain the LaSalle and what GM was thinking. A LaSalle was the economy model that they brought out to compete with the Buick and the Chevrolet and the Pontiac and the Oldsmobile that it was a lot cheaper car. This brand new was $995 back in the day. Where did you find this? Uh, this came, the body came from California. Uh, and it came from one of my friends who passed away and couldn't complete the car and I ended up getting the car and it took 20 years to restore. It took 20 years? To find all the little pieces and parts because he didn't have all the parts obviously and I didn't know that. And you took on the project and what did you find when you started looking for these parts? That somebody's got to be crazy to do one of these cars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean well, it's, it's very hard to find everything. I mean it, it just everything's different even from the Chevrolet or the Buick they have different trim rings for the headlights and there's so many little oddities to the car that Sometimes it just drove you crazy. It was almost like, I'm sorry I ever started this project. But you kept going for 20 years, and you were really precise about what you were looking for. What did you put into this car? Well, we went all original on here, and back in 37, they didn't have any grade markings on any of the bolts. So all the bolts that we replaced, if we replaced any, we found a lot of the original bolts are back into this car, cleaned and replated and put back in. But the ones that we had to make, we had to machine off the grade markings, and then put them back in the car so, so it matches period correct. So I tried to do everything period correct with the original Cadillac parts of the day. There's no aftermarket stuff on this car. 20 years in the process. At any point did you think, what am I doing and why am I continuing? Uh, many times. Did you? This just became such a tiresome thing trying to find stuff sometimes. You put one piece on it and you didn't do something for three months because you were looking for it for three months. And that gets pretty aggravating and frustrating. It rides like a Cadillac, and it's got plenty of power. In 1937, this, this model was the Indy Pace car. In 1937, people don't realize it, so it's quite a powerful car. I mean, it really gets up and scoots. The Opera Coupe is an interesting feature because you look at a car like this, and then you look inside and you think, well, why would they not have a back seat in this car? This seat, has, they have two seats, two jump seats that fold down, and you actually sit knee to knee in the car. So it's kind of different than just sitting looking forward. You're kind of, kind of, you gotta sit sideways and look, turn your head. Well, we've been doing our show for three years. We've only run across three LaSalle's. How about you? How many LaSalle's have you run across? Uh, probably four or five over the time because I have to deal with those people to see what I had to do to make mine correct or what I didn't want to do that, you know, where they shortcut. I, I just wanted it to be perfect. Well, it looks it, Bill. Well, thank you. Bob, it's not every guy who owns a fire truck. In fact, you're the only, the second guy I've ever met who owns a fire truck. And it's original. I have a 1919 Ford Model TT Prospect uh, Deluge fire truck. Uh, That's a long title. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, where did you find a 1919 Ford Prospect fire truck, and why did you find a 1919 fire truck? Well, I guess the why is the first uh, part. I grew up behind the Wycliffe fire station when I was a little boy, and when they'd ring the siren, if I ran fast enough, I could jump on the tailboard and ride with them. Uh, I'm a volunteer on the Munson Fire Department. I've always had a love for fire trucks, and, and when I saw one at a show once, I said, that's what I've got to get, so. 
Where did you get this? It was actually in, in Chardon, Ohio. We dragged it home and half hour later we got it running and uh, been playing with it ever since. And how long ago was that, Bob? About eight years ago. It says New Philadelphia on the side. And, so and that, I'm assuming it was a New Philadelphia fire this truck. This is a New Philadelphia fire truck. They, they bought that back then and uh, it was a small town. It's a chemical wagon. And when they had a fire back then, they'd flick the switch on the pump for the fire hydrants and they'd hit with the chemical tank first and then they'd hook up to the hydrants and continue to fight the fire. Uh, I just came back from the uh, SPAMFA uh, national meet in Frankenmuth, Michigan. Which is a fire engine group? It's, yeah, Society for the Preservation and Appreciation of Antique Motorized Fire Apparatus. And uh, they pretty much certified that this is the most original prospect truck that they've seen out there, decals, engine, paint. Uh, one of the things I do love on here is the fact that if you notice on the front fender, is the American flag with the eagle holding it. It's very patriotic, it's, it's, it's America. It tells you everything about firefighting in, in, in the U.S. Uh, it still has the original hard rubber tires from 1919 on the back. A little bumpy, but... Uh, but they run. But they run. And uh, it, it hand, you have to hand crank to start it. So I have an Armstrong starter. <laughs> and uh, it, it's it's... Like being on the Beverly Hillbillies, that's, or going to the amusement park for the first time. It's a, a hoot to drive. What did, what was this like the first time you jumped in it to drive it? Scary. Yeah. Again, because the Model T, the pedals, the, the gasoline's on the column, and there's three different pedals. You know, drives on the left, reverse in the middle, and brakes on the right. And you have to, you have to think about it every time you drive it because it's not like a conventional car. Now I'm assuming, Bob, the originality of this is so special you'd never touch it. Right, I'm not going to restore it, no. I've, I've decided that for sure. I'll probably uh, put some kind of wax or something on it to keep it, but no, it's not going to be restored. This was the state of the art at the turn of the century. So this is about 1920 and it's, things started changing. Same with the tires in the back. Uh, pneumatic tires weren't as trustworthy with the tubes and about that time they became, so you could get it either way, uh, became more important. Well, it's great that you go from a little kid who liked fire trucks to a, a big kid. I'm a big fireman. kid still. Now a big kid who likes and owns a fire truck. Yes. Take one look at this Pierce Arrow, and you'd never guess this. It hadn't been run for about 30 years, so it was covered with dust, and it was kind of in a situation where you didn't really know how good it was. It's next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Sally. Tina. Betsy. You've developed quite a bond with your classic car. Let the consignment professionals at RK Motors Charlotte make the selling process as painless as possible. Through precision marketing and large customer base, we all but guarantee a sale at maximum value. And we don't get paid until your car sells. We've sold over 1,500 classic cars here at RK Motors Charlotte. And now we'd like to get to know Betsy, at least for a little while. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Todd, it's striking, <clears throat> it's rare, and it's been in your family for a very long time. It's a 1929 Hupmobile. Yes, it is. Since 1955, it's been in my family four years longer than I've been in my family. <laughs> my dad traded my uncle uh, a radiator and two snow tires uh, as a trade for it, and my uncle thought he got the best of the deal. At the time, did he? He probably did because scrap was up and he was going to scrap the radiator and use the snow tires. So, <laughs> and they, they were going to send the car to auction. They thought they'd get $20 out of it. My uncle and my dad used to go hunting down the railroad tracks. One would stand on the running board, and the other one would drive, and then they'd go rabbit hunting that way. Rabbit hunting off the running boards of the automobile. On, 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 down the railroad tracks. I don't think that's what it was designed for, do you? No, but I suppose they figured it wasn't worth much back then, so. <laughs> Now you ended up with this when, when it came out of the barn? I think it finally came out of the barn in 1977, but we didn't, I, I started ripping it apart in around 1980. So 1980? Yeah. So that's 32 years ago. Yeah, it's been an ongoing project. How it, long of an ongoing project? Uh, it took me over 20 years to... 20 to years? Stare, yeah, I tore it down to the frame. The, uh, the main thing that got me going on it again is when I took it apart, I put masking tape and rode on everything and uh, 
well, the masking tape okay. had faded and most of it had fallen off. And I told my wife, I says, I better get it back together. I'm starting to forget where everything goes. <laughs> Yeah, that could be detrimental to the project. Yeah, right? it kind of slows things down when you have to look and wonder where, you know, go back to the old pictures of when I tore it apart and see where everything goes. Uh, actually, the first couple of years, I had never even seen another Hubmobile. And the only ones we ever heard about is when we'd go uh, go somewhere, and, and most of the people said the only uh, Hubmobile they'd ever heard of is sitting in a barn was actually this one. I consider this one of the family, so. <laughs> and your daughter? Yeah, and my daughter, well, we got a picture of her when she was, I think, one year old. I have another picture on our album where she was helping me finish sand it when she was probably, well, she was out of school, so probably close to 20, 19, 20 years old. So. And she's how old now? 20, 25. <laughs> so it's been in the family. Yeah, so it's been in the family. Now, tell me about the car itself. When I got the car, the running boards were hardwood planks and the, the aprons were completely gone. In Indiana, there's a uh, oh, place that has the original Hutmobile blueprints. I dug through there, got the original dimensions for the, for the uh, running boards and made those. Um, that was like a treasure hunt. It was, and we were really lucky to find them. And uh, so just, you know, a little piece by piece. The ornamentation on the the odometer and everything else. Mm -hmm. Is that original? Yeah, that's all. Uh, back in, well, when this came out in 29, they were really into the Art Deco. So you see the, the gas pedal, the dash, all the all the window cranks, all the, uh, oh, the openers. Pretty much everything is styled in the Art Deco, which they carried on for another couple years after this, too. Uh, the base model 29 Hotmobile came with wooden spoke wheels. And then the next step up would be uh, wire and then the option was artillery wheels which are disc wheels so and you don't see a whole lot of whole lot of them with the disc wheels on it so it makes it kind of kind of uh, special well Todd it's a, a wonderful family story a wonderful restoration thank you and you did a great job thank you George you have a striking car a Pierce Arrow. Explain what model and exactly what you have here. Well, this is a 1927 Series 36 runabout. It wasn't until 1929 that they termed these roadsters. They were called runabouts. How long have you had this one, George, and where did I've you find it? I've had this one about two years, and it came out of a local collection. And what did it look like when you picked it up? Surprisingly, it hadn't been run for about 30 years, so it was covered with dust and it was kind of in a situation where you didn't really know how good it was. And when we started working on it, the paint came back beautifully. Um, this is the original 1978 restoration. Now, what is it about a 27 Pierce Arrow that separates it from so many other cars? Because obviously the, the Pierce name is, is well known for quality and you have a great example of that right here. Well, back in that era, it was classified as the Pierce, Packard, and Peerless, the three Ps, were considered the cars that people really desired if they couldn't afford a Duesenberg or some of the foreign cars. They came in all sorts of body styles. You had enclosed cars like seven passenger limousines, four passenger uh, coupes, uh, things of that nature, all the way up to the open cars, the uh, B Phaetons, uh, uh, four passenger Phaetons, seven passenger Phaetons, runabouts. George, what's under the hood? There's a six cylinder dual ignition uh, engine in this car. It's a very big block six cylinder. It has two spark plugs per cylinder on the theory that there be more complete ignition of the gasoline. Uh, therefore, it would have two coils and 12 spark plug leads coming out of the distributor. Headlights are the size of small barrels. <laughs> Pierce Arrow was known for having headlights that came off the fenders. They looked like frog eyes. Mm -hmm. But they came with a second type, which was an option, and they're called drum headlights or New York headlights. They were built in Buffalo, New York. Um, so the drum headlights are rarer than the normal Pierce frog eyes. You're a Pierce Aero fan. I am. After I got out of college, I had a 1928 coupe. 
And fortunately, a lot of men mentored me back then and taught me the old car hobby. Uh, after getting married, having children, building houses, uh, I had to get rid of it. But I was able to get back into it later on in life, and I have four Pierce Arrows now. And nothing but Pierce Arrows you've ever had? No, that's always been Pierce Arrows. I've, I've loved the mark. I learned it. I studied it. As I say, I was mentored, and one of the men that mentored me was an Al Ferrara. And Al taught me about old cars. And this came out of his collection when he passed away. And I went specifically for this car because of Al's mentorship. And I think it's implicit upon us older folks to teach the younger people about the cars. Al did that for me. That's nice. It better be the crystal clear part of a restoration. And they will reproduce that glass to where nobody would know the difference. Under the Hood is next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Sally, Tina, Betsy, you've developed quite a bond with your classic car. Let the consignment professionals at RK Motors Charlotte make the selling process as painless as possible. Through precision marketing and large customer base, we all but guarantee a sale at maximum value, and we don't get paid until your car sells. We've sold over 1,500 classic cars here at RK Motors Charlotte, and now we'd like to get to know Betsy, at least for a little while. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. A critical part of any restoration, that stuff, the glass. And Mike Velick, the restoration manager here at RK Motors Restoration, it's a topic we've never covered before, but it's so critical and really kind of interesting as well. Right. Um, for instance, this particular car, we'd restored this car already for the customer. Great looking Torino. There was no aftermarket company that made, remade the glass for this particular model Torino. What it had happened is, you know, we were trying to keep everything as original as possible because of the sentimental value, just freshened and new. Well, glass, since we couldn't find it, we decided we would use his regular glass. And when he got the car, he thought, eh, it's just not quite nice enough for this quality of a car. Okay. So the customer said, Let's go that next step. Since you can't find it aftermarket, what do we do? We're lucky enough to find a Torino Cougar Superstore, a uh, place where some guy over the years has collected everything Cougar and Torino that you could imagine, and he just happened to have a set of glass, new old stock. But you couldn't find reproduction glass for this car? Could not find wow. reproduction glass. For the most part, Jeff, you can always find a windshield. Let's face it, windshields get the abuse that they have to make a windshield for every car. So you found a reproduction Reproduction windshield. front windshield was no problem. And we always, almost every restoration we ever do, you always replace that glass, because you know what? You want, you want that want customer to feel good when he's sitting in there too. Right. You don't want to see a foggy, wiped up window. You want nice. And that windshield looks fabulous. And they were fine, but there's a difference. Reproduction glass, a lot of times, the markings will be different. Uh, there's always a marking in the glass area with who made it or the factory manufacturer. For instance, PPG was one of the big glass manufacturers back in the day. So here we've got our PPG stampings, but it's a modern stamping. Mm -hmm. Now when you go into the new old stock glass. As you see, the new old stock stickers are still on it, and the manufacturer, through Ford, was the car light, and he's got his logo there, while the logo is also etched in the yep. glass. There's the etching you always see on, on Ford glass. You know, a lot of your more popular cars, and you know, the Mopars are real. They're hot right now. They're real hot right yep. now. They're, they're desirable for collectors. So, you know, aftermarket companies understand this too. You know, they follow these trends. They know what's going on. So, for instance, the 67 Charger that we redid here, um, factory glass in the car was so-so. In most cases, would be usable. Right. In this particular case, customer went nut and bolt, full frame up, ground up restoration, you know, every nut and bolt perfect, nothing untouched on the car. 
So you don't want to put that scratch glass in as we had talked about. Well, there are companies now that you send them either a picture or they send you a little document and you fill it out with every bit of information that is in that etched piece of glass mm -hmm. from the factory if you have them and they will reproduce that glass to where nobody would know the difference. Nice. Perfect etchings, perfect date codes. You fool the best of the best with a glass like that. They're available. If you can't find the reproduction glass, it's always, always nice that it's available somewhere, sometimes. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. When it comes to restoring or servicing your classic or high-performance car, expertise is the name of the game. And that's precisely what you'll find at RK Motors. You'll find our expertise in the attention to detail that can only be acquired through years of working on world-class builds. You'll also find our expertise in the RKM Performance Center, where we've assembled a team of highly qualified ASC certified mechanics. When expertise is the name of the game, trust the experts at RK Motors. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to the Patterson Fruit Farm on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Stephen, it's a 1961 Rambler American. Yes. And it may be the only one here in the field all day long today. I'm I, sure. I really like it. Yeah. How long have you had this? Four years. And you wanted a Rambler American. Why, Stephen? My grandfather had this same car in a silver. Well, if, if that's the case, then you have to go find one, right? <laughs> now, what's the paint scheme on this? Because it, it's very, very interesting. Well, uh, the Sissel strip around the car is a darker shade of green metallic and the roof and the wheels. Just to make it two-tone is always better to me than single. And is that the way this car came originally? Stephen? It was plain, it was Alamo beige, a color that no one would ever want. <laughs> I don't know how they sold it in the first place. The Rambler is an interesting car because even though it was very popular at the time, it's still not one of the most well-known cars from, from that era. Well, we were a Rambler family. My grandfather had them, my aunts and uncles had them, and so I was very familiar with them. And they were a cheap car, but a dependable car. And they always had crazy, wonderful design like this, has such a happy face, and the back end is very simple, but it's gorgeous. And they always were crazy in design. This is the compact model, and the year preceding this, it was completely different. It was still the bathtub bubble effect. And then they went to this for three years, and then in 64, they changed again entirely. But this was high and square, and it was like a tank. Nothing like what they had done before. And the 61 had this grill, 62 had horizontal, bars and 63 had vertical and that was the only difference in the years. I like the grill on it. Too. Yeah, that's great. Well, 33,000 miles is all. Original miles on it. Mm -hmm. 33,000. Boy, how'd you? That's a fabulous find there. Yes. Well, I'm sure your grandfather would be proud. Oh, yes. I don't say this very often, but I've had enough of classic cars. I'm on my way to go buy a pie. I'm Jeff Phelps. We'll see you next time on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte.